Hello everybody and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today we are doing just a progress report on this wonderful piece by Marilyn Belford. So first we're going to talk about how I am going to ditch around the birds and I'm going to show you how I do that and then I'm going to go into what I'm going to use to fill around the birds as well as the archer herself. We now have this amazing piece loaded on the machine and I have basted the edge within this throat space. And my very first step after I have basted the edge is I wanna go into the bird itself around each and every little ditch, including the little details like the eyes and even some of these small applique feathers, very, very sli small slivers of fabric that are gonna go around here. And I'm going to ditch every bit of this. Now, I am going to ditch it initially with Superior Mono Poly, which is a polyester invisible thread. Um, and I'm going to be using the smoke, of course. The only time I use the non-smoke would be on white. Um, and I love it because it's a poly base and it will clean well in case this wonderful piece ever has to be uh, dry clean laundered. Uh, however, Marilyn takes care of her art, art pieces. So then, once this is ditch, then I'm going to go into the sky background with a matching poly embroidery type thread of 40 weight. And I'm going to put swirls because it's a sky that looks a little bit angry. So I'm going to do some bigger swirls out in the open and then tighter swirls right up around the bird and even around um, the figure's head when we get to the human head portion. Now I'm just taking my time. I'm staying right in that ditch. And it's an easy ditch to hit the way that Marilyn has appliqued this piece. Now when I start my day, I don't have my cruise or my start speed mode set on anything but zero. But as I get proficient at moving, then I typically will change my start speed mode so that I have not just the regular stitch regulator running, but a little bit of a cruise or start speed mode running throughout the whole ditch process. And let me show you the difference. So now I have that at 100. So as I come down and do that ditch work, I'm always moving at a nice pace. I very rarely come to a complete stop. Now I just hit my stop there, but if I started it, my needle is still going to be moving that fast throughout the process. Again, when you have that mode on, it's almost like having a, um, a mower's self-propelled system on. And it's a little easier to move through all of the ditch work. Come down and again I'm just taking my time. Ditch work on a piece like this is never a fast process. Come around, stay in the ditch. I'll do the outside portion of that little section first. Now I'm going to come in to all the small pieces of fabric. Ditch right around there. Hit all the little sections and that's going to faux trapunto all of those beautiful feather fabric choices that Marilyn made when she did her piece. And sometimes when you're doing these pieces, it really is just like you're doing one stitch at a time. You're trying to hit that ditch in those little areas. Perfect.
Taking your time can take a mediocre ditcher and turn them into a very proficient ditcher. So it really is about how much time are you willing to take. As we go into some of the more detailed portions of the applique, I'm actually going to be changing from my no-notch mini to my notched mini so I can wrap it around the foot and go up and around any of these little tiny details that I see here. Also, when I see curves that are pretty near perfect, like this, on the neck or the gobble of the bird, what I will do is I'm also going to pull out my small arc. And this is where you have to go look at your ruler collection and see what shapes are similar. It doesn't have to be perfect because as you're sewing, you can actually roll the ruler so that you can get it perfect in a curved ditch. But you do want to definitely take advantage of all of the different rulers that you have in your collection. So now I'm going to come up here. Follow the ditch. I'm now up to some of the small details. So I'm just going to slide in the notch. And that's going to give me a little bit more control. So I'm going to go right up there. And first I'm doing the outer portion. And I'm going to come up, down, and then I'm going to come around and I'm going to go right on the outside of the white portion of those little top head feathers. And notice how slow I'm going. And also because I have that start speed mode on, it's still even when I slow down, it's going to take a few stitches. So she's going to get a nice stabilizing stitch on the outer edge of those small detail pieces. Come up, down, around, and back, and I'm go, going to go into that light skin tone portion. And that's a little more straight, so I might switch to my small straight, because there are a lot of straight angles with very little curve. When I come to a little bit of curve, I just shift the ruler to follow that ditch. You know, you get more proficient the more you use a ruler to do ditch work around all the different shapes you come up with in quilting. Come around. Follow that slow right around here. And then come back up again with that wonderful invisible thread in. You can follow a ditch a few times. And it's not going to overtake or cause any sort of distortion. Now as I come around this eye, which is going to be a real detailed area, I'm going to switch to a notch or a controlled ruler that wraps around my foot to get right around those shapes perfect. So now what we're going to do after we've done this ditch work, which we've done around the whole bird of prey, is I'm coming around and up near the bird, I'm doing tighter swirls, but not micro tight. And then I'm getting bigger with the swirls to give it some texture of wind around a little bit further out from the bird itself. And then as we slide forward again, I have already done the swirls around the bird. As we move across the quilt, what we see is I've created in the darker clouds that come forward a few inner echoes to make sure to differentiate between the far back clouds and the forward clouds. And as I move my way over, I've added larger swirls up in the dark cloud itself. And now, as we come down here, we're going to start doing some small work to separate the two. And to make sure that our far black back sky, the sky that's the furthest back, is going to recede into the background. Here we're going right up against that dark cloud section. And of course we have the bow 
which we're up against. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go real tight up against just underneath that dark cloud. So that way it's, it's going to recede into the background and it's going to give this beautiful effect as you stand back from the piece. And what I'm doing right now are those same swirls that we did bigger behind the bird of prey, but now we're going a little bit smaller to sink everything back and under the clouds. Just like when we actually start doing her hair and her face, we're going to do the swirls very small behind there to bring her forward and the background will recede into the background where it needs to be. Right up and under. Now obviously I've already ditched under there. And so we're just going right up to that ditch line. Nice small wind swirls. As I come down and away from there, I can go a little bit more open and not quite so tight. So here, we're starting to see our archer. And what we're going to do is to take this lighter blue area, which is underneath and behind the dark cloud. We want to recede that back. So after we've done the ditch work around the face and the hair, we're going to go into this light blue area, just like we did around the bow. And we're going to do a nice tight swirl so that it recedes into the background where it should be.